been to this before, uh, we don't have enough time to cover every model by every person, but hopefully we can cover a, a few of the highlights, and if, if I don't get to your model, I'm really sorry, but we'll try and cover as many people as we can. Um, I'm going to start with uh, a little item by a creator called David Brill. Who's that? <laughs> 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 yeah. If you want to shut the light. Can, yeah, I can't. Can we do something with the And a lot of your modulars just won't keep still. And the, late, the latest uh, one is this uh, creatively known ice washer heat. Uh, I'm sorry. Ice cream, ice cream. No, that's not the ice washer heat. So the two sort of cubic things, the, the green and yellow and blue, and the one below, they're related. The, one, the, the green and yellow and the blue uh, is solid. And it's actually called Cuba Asia because she had the idea. Oh no, no, no that's called the, the whole lot cube. H O A L O T, 
which stands for <coughs> hell of a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so as you said, that's nice, but if you pressed it a bit at either side, maybe it would collapse. So well, that's a good idea. So if, if you put extra, just extra creases in the four, in the, in the six units, it actually closes up to the one below, uh, which is, that one's cube called Cubasia, because she had the idea. But the interesting thing is, and it's really tatty, because I've fiddled with it such a lot, it's all really dogged and horrid. But, and the problem is, when it's fully shut, you can't, there's nothing to get hold of uh, to open it up again. But then, because of that, I, then I went on to fiddle to make the, the uh, ice washer heater, which is a really closely related. Is that the one? That's good, yeah. Thank you. I'll show you if you want. Uh, we haven't got Alessandro and Alessandro. <coughs> Sure, who created this dragon is the creator of the song we were just here today. Didn't it have, didn't it have Kai Sato? It had Kai, I'm not, it did, I'm not sure if it's Kai or not. Okay. We'll find out who created it because it's by far and away the most complex figurative thing in the exhibition. It's uh, really, uh, really silly. Thing. Okay, so we don't have those there, Mike. We have to show them. So, I mostly create figurative designs and uh, I wet fold most of my models. Uh, most of these work without wet folding, but they're just nicer if you wet fold. You can just make them more pristine. And, and all of these really are different experiments with ways of making curved surfaces and using that to represent animals. And I try, most of my models now are, are asymmetric in some way, because it just brings a bit of movement and, and life to the things. Uh, and you can't see it from the photo, these baboon monkeys down here are very asymmetric, they have lots of different kind of surfaces and so on going on. Uh, and and, and I, I think too often we make animals and um, they're technically very good and technically far beyond what I can do, but they don't look alive and they don't look like they move. So I just want to bring some more character and life. Is that a cat or a dog? That is a cat. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that that one that's one I'm teaching later. Yeah. Can I say something? Yes. I, I think that the, the best part of your work is that you give a sense of artistic uh, sense because you don't try to imitate life, but you just try to work your concept of a cat or a baboon or a or fish. Or so I love it very much. Thank you. It's, I, I just think realism is not something I can achieve, but, but there's always another way of thinking about a figure. And, and what inspires me. With the toucan, I had a really clear idea, and it took me a long time to figure out how can I simply make these shapes no, but, and, and, and would make it look cheeky. Yeah. Eric Kenway used to say, what's this word real? Everybody judges it by the concept of real. Mm. You know, it isn't a real cat, it isn't a real bird. It's real origami. It doesn't. It doesn't talk, it's 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 it means it's, 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 it's not real, it's, it's, it's a it's a representation. Are you willing to call it a dog and submit it for the year of the dog? I thought about making a dog and I had a few tries, but I'm just not a dog person and I just I just couldn't really feel what I wanted. See, it looks like a dog to me. That's what it it's, it's just a not very good cat. It's a very lovely dog. <laughs> so, is John Cameron? Yes. Yes. Could you, could you come down front and tell us a bit about these, these amazing things? Uh, this model is uh, all similar to me. And then there is a visualization of a uh, irrational number. The mm, this uh, this is this model is uh, uh, a 
application of uh, traditional method in uh, modern senses. Is that, mm. <laughs> So Above one we have is the one. main part of it can be this one you yes. Yes. but the uh, above model is uh, mm, show uh, pi and the other model is uh, mm, natural logarithm that is Nick uh, number E is uh, uh, we uh, have to <coughs> fold infinity <laughs> And the and the uh, there's, there's also uh, I think this one is golden ratio. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's amazing that this is obviously, as you say, this is this goes back into tradition, uh, and some of the oldest books we have have this sort of folding in. But it's it's amazing that even now you can come along and bring something new and. And interesting and beautiful to, to that form. I think that's great. Is it really hard to do these? Are, are the connections between cranes very difficult? Yes. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feared that might be the answer. Thank you very much. Um, these were here from Seven Osmi. I don't know if we have uh, if we have the creator here. But I had wondered, did you ever, all, all of you, remember to blow like the flowers? Uh, I very gently blow on one or two. Yeah, so they yeah. will rotate if you blow. <laughs> and, and, and it says on the information that they're robust enough to be outside, but I, I, was, I was frightened to, to blow too hard. Because oh, they're, they're so in this one was presented by a new four company which makes the paper, uh -huh. synthetic paper. Uh, it's all right. Yeah. Okay, would you like to come down? We've got one of your here. So, I think this, this convention has got more, more tessellations than we've ever had, and it really does show not only that tessellations are a very much a growing form of origami, but also the, the immense variety of techniques and forms that we can get. And garands, garands are rather unique because I tried to take a few photographs. They're very hard to photograph because there's so many surfaces <coughs> and there's so much form and relief. And I, I just wonder if you could tell us a bit about the technique or the inspiration for this. So the technique, is, the technique is just a lot of pleats and they're, they alternate direction. Uh, the original distillation like this was made by Paul Jackson. It was the bulge. That's that's all I've been doing since I started creating my own models, pretty much. But um, I figured out that you could do multiple copies of the same thing at the same time on the sheet of paper. And then after a while, you, you get into different patterns that curve differently. It's, it's too dark here to see, but I can pass this around. Um, this one, uh, show it. one of the things I like about them is that they don't look like they consist of straight line folds, but that's all they are. Uh, the paper starts to curve under its own tension and create these interesting three-dimensional shapes. And then you start thinking about how to control what it does, and you don't really want to do it because it wants to do it on its own. Um, here, one of the things I tried doing was to get as close as possible to the limit of what I can do in, in, in elephant height. The pleats in the very center are probably less than two millimeters wide, and uh, the paper is thick, so it's impossible to fold neatly. So I just, I just fold as fast as I can, and I don't worry about the accuracy. Um, do you use any folding implements or scores? Um, once in a while, at the intersection of two pleats, one of the, the one that's, that I pulled afterwards is not neat, so I'll, I'll, I'll run a uh, sporting tool through that. But not, not for the folding itself, not for the creasing. I, I do all that with the fingers. I just, just a little bit of a clean up. Did, did, they, did the ideas for them come kind of purely from the material and the geometry, or do, do they? Do they represent what what inspires Some of them are attempting to get a certain type of shape, but most of them are. Uh, what happens if I do this? If I hold this sequence, the fold of uh, leaves, and um, a few of them are 
solutions to problems where I, I was convinced that something was impossible, and then I realized like, five or ten years later, oh yeah, it's possible. Um, so I go and do it. Uh, this one, I tried to vary the width of the pleats relatively uh, slowly towards the edge. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the center is much finer than the outside. And of course, I, I folded this during the autumn convention in the evening, and um, at some point I decided I didn't want to finish and, and fold the last thing. So um, that's, that's what we get. Wait, this was folded in the last five days? Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was folded in a couple of hours, from over a couple of evenings before I could crash. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Does it send you to sleep? <laughs> no, it does help relax because it's it's repetitive, mm -hmm. and so unless I've bitten up too much and, and I run across problems that I cannot handle, um, it's it's actually calming and meditative. Then what the other thing you can do with them, and I haven't done it here, is you can pull the sequence of fleece and then you can start shaping the paper because it it is it is now stretchable. There's a lot of so paper we this one made example of this one opens shape. up on its own, so uh -huh. you could yeah you could shape it uh, a lot more uh, than, than here. Um, but yeah, you can <laughs> sculpt that sheet. That's... Yeah, it's it's fascinating. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Lee, uh, yeah. could I just encourage you to persuade people to stand on the stage so we can yeah, see them? Because they're on the steps, so we can't see them. <laughs>
real a real application of this technology in real life looks more or less like this. Mm -hmm. You managed to take horrible inspiration <laughs> and create something rather beautiful. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, I asked if we could bring a couple of these along. Uh, and there is workshop in place. So these, these are flat foldable forms. But they have a rather new structure. I wouldn't say this is flat folder. Flat folder is holding two flat. But mm. This is just a uh, mm. uh, fusion shape coming out of uh, uh, flat C. So, in a way, in my understanding, this is true pop up. Any pop up. Mm. Having the object between center line, the center corner is not really popping up. <laughs> in, in proper meaning of English and Japanese words for pop up is obvious, obvious and jumping out. So I wanted to make uh, some method to, 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 to the object jumping out of the uh, to its way. So uh, I came up with the idea. Maybe I was at the age of 8 or 10, but I couldn't do that uh, for, for that time. So recently, with the help of a little computer and uh, 3D CAD, I came to what uh, this is possible. And uh, I form, form you, made some formula and uh, published it at the 6,000. <coughs> so this is the result of 6,000. And this year, I, I modified it a little bit for uh, other situations. So in my my workshop, I will give you this small little guy, about 10 centimeter square or long, uh, pre cut, pre creased one. So, uh, if you come to my workshop, you will get 10, 10 pieces, 10 types of design, good package, complete package. <laughs> I'm sold on that. <laughs> do, these, do these have a, a practical application as well as being beautiful and interesting? Yeah, I'm thinking of, of many practical applications. I calculated this for, for, for building about 30 meter uh, concrete structure can be built with uh, a little reinforcement. Also, this one is already at the uh, purpose for children and story and also the movie theater setting. Uh, puppet theater in the uh -huh. way travels all over the town, but this as their set for castle, castle or magician or something. Uh, so, uh, so because of the fatigue of uh, seeing Hindi, this, this breaks, but uh, as you see, the stability still exists uh, without perfect elements. <laughs> this is, this is I think it's robust. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Well, I will show up how to do more of that. Thank you. 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 Simple, a kind of simple model. 
So please try to make my dog, please. <laughs> do you, do you, for those of us like me who, who missed your class yesterday, do you have diagrams? Oh, yes. Uh, the diagram was already published in the uh, Tantedan Information Book in this year. So you can buy it through the internet. <laughs> understand the system of the, the, the design of the model, you can make a taller or smaller or larger as you want. So it's just not one model, but the system is designed. And also the buildings. Are, um, there are um, some examples of uh, modular origami with uh, cubes uh, and pyramids. So you can make castles. Uh, 
just like to say that Federico, he, he very often likes to tell a story. Isn't it true? If you're a regular visitor to CDO conventions, there's a new episode to the story in many cases. Uh, yeah, What's about this, uh, this the monastery, for example? Yeah, yeah this is just uh, a little example, but I uh, uh, usually make villages or a monastery or so, so it's a huge quite huge uh, uh, competition and I try to tell a story uh, I, I don't know what the, what, what the story is so you have to try to figure it out so you have to imagine and uh, yeah. thank you okay. Talk about any of the no, I, I, too. Um, actually, um, 
What I'm doing with my estimations, I, I take a single molecule and try to move it to become a Julian at least. I use a glass, which is about 0 0.3 millimeter thick, and it goes through a photo which is called photo etching, a process that uh, makes all the pieces that I need to be etched from the metal with acid. It's kind of a long process, I won't go into it, but then I get it, and, and uh, if you look at my tumor, you can see that the other side is really just the reverse side of the fold. So you have the two sides, as, uh, and the only way to do this kind of jewelry is by, by this process, by folding, because if you try to mold it, then you will never be able to polish it as it is polished here. So I polish the plates while they are flat, and then I fold it by hand, and, uh, and then I coat it with gold. So, and actually you have on this, this is a single molecule of Hilula, which is the exact uh, model on the top left. Um, and this is maybe the cubes, like that, the, the upper one, which is, uh, but it, it's not exactly the same model, but, um, yeah. Uh, uh, and and is, is the metal, they, they look so precise, and obviously, as you say, they're, they're etched, but is, is it very hard to fold? Is it, is Surprisingly, it? not. Mm -hmm. uh, when you use the glass coming different uh, softness level, they have soft, semi hard, and hard. So if you use the soft, and you etch it from 0 0.3 to 0 0.15, then you actually fold something which is the thickness of paper. Mm -hmm. And if it's a soft glass, you can just fold it by your hand. And that allows you to get the real yes. huge the only, the only thing is, and so on is, is The only thing with folding metal is that you cannot reverse a fold. Sure. If you do it, it breaks. So you have to make all the folds go to the right direction at once. And then mm -hmm. that, that's why you don't usually see that many tessellations in metal. So it's very difficult to, to yeah, it. do But the single molecule is quite simple. Mm -hmm. it, all, it has all the edges ready to play. Question. Yes, so does, does this mean that the jewelry is a little bit fragile? Is it easy to break? No, it because folds, folds gives it a structure, a, a strength. Mm -hmm. When you fold it, it, so if you don't try to unfold, it will not, nothing will happen to it. So it's not that fragile. Yes, why I can buy the You ask for that. It was on Etsy, but you can just contact me. You can buy it here for me. Okay. <laughs> Don't go on, on Amazon. <laughs>